friends welcome back to our channel in today's video i'm going to be talking about how to go on vacation when you have a homestead i've been getting a bunch of dms and having a lot of conversations with people that are new to homesteading or are considering homesteading with the question how do you still go out of town or travel when you have a homestead and animals we are obviously new to homesteading ourselves we're only one year in however we have done multiple trips since we've done that and we plan to do like one big trip every year at least one big trip every year and then like a couple weekend trips here and there so we definitely still plan to travel and i feel like that is one of the biggest hang-ups with homesteading life and having animals is like what do you do to go out of town because we still want to travel some how do we make that happen so i'm going to talk through that we're going to go outside and do chores and i'm going to share a few of the things we're doing for this specific trip and some things we've done in the past as well to make it a little bit easier to go out of town if you're new around here welcome to our channel hello i'm cayenne my husband matt and i have a backyard homestead we also have three kiddos three and under and lots of animals running around so we share a lot about backyard homesteading motherhood family life all of those kind of things and if you like that kind of content we would love for you to subscribe and follow along on our journey as we share everything that we are learning and if you're not new around here we're so grateful as always for you watching another video and spending your day with us and we just love you guys so thank you so much <laughs> have the babies in their little pen and they are ready to be fed so we're gonna do that really quick saying hello this is juniper i think we've officially decided that that's her name and then sugar's down here so they hang out during the days we separate sugar from her mom during the day and then we feed her bottles to hopefully help her be a little bit more friendly and get used to the bottle and then we milk out her mom in the evening so we're testing that out and so far we really like it but we'll definitely do some things differently, I think, with our next kids born to get them used to the bottle a little earlier. Okay, so I am feeding it Juniper right now, so I figured I'd talk through what our plans are for this vacation. So we are going to the beach in a couple weeks with my family, and here's the first thing that I'll say. Homesteading does not mean it is impossible to go on vacation at all. Like I think it's super possible, super doable. However, I do, like I will admit, it is a lot more work to go on vacation than it would be if you didn't have animals. That's just kind of the reality. So you do have to know that going into it. Like it just does take a little bit more prep beforehand to get everyone you know ready to go out of town not just packing yourself and your kids and all that but making sure that the animals are good i feel like she's about to knock this camera right off <laughs> um to make sure everyone else the animals are taken care of and everything is good to go for you to go on vacation so we are in full on like hustle mode really right now because spring as it is is already very very busy just with the garden and animals baby animals like i don't know it's just very full in the spring and it gets very busy very quickly and then to try and go out of town during that time as well just takes a lot of preparation so we're doing a lot of different things pretty much all of our evenings right now are either garden tasks or prepping things to go out of town and so we're having to be very mindful about that but what we're doing for this specific trip is we planned that um two of our goats happen to need to be bred around this time and so we they go to a local farm for a month um, to be bred and they stay there so we planned for that time to be while we were out of town so we have two of our goats that are already gone and then we have this little bottle baby here and I actually have a friend who is wanting to get into goats that um, is very interested in goats and her kids are interested and since this one is a bottle baby super friendly super easy to take the bottle and everything I asked her if she would be interested in having the bottle baby at her house for the week because she has land and all of that so she can do that so they are going to be taking our bottle baby and taking care of her of her for us which is obviously a huge blessing for us but also really fun for her <laughs> she's getting right quick. okay okay I'm trying to give it to you but you're trying to knock my camera off um obviously like really fun for her kids as well to get that experience and they can kind of experience having a little goat for a little while we did this before we got goats there was actually a local farm that did a rent a goat program when they had a whole bunch of baby kids and you could rent the goat literally for a weekend and take care of them and we did that right before wow this is not working at all she's being crazy um right before we got into goats and it was such a fun experience and we absolutely loved it so that's why i reached out to my friend to see because i knew she wanted goats and all of that and she was super excited and really wanted to do it so that's where she will be going and then we will have two other goats s'mores and sugar that will need to be taken care of so the other thing that i planned for with this trip 
is I knew that sugar would still be on s'mores, like nursing on s'mores at that point when we went on vacation. And we've done this in the past too, when Churro, her baby from last year was still on her, is when we planned for our vacation so that we could do that as a backup plan so that someone would not have to milk her. Granted, both of these times were when the babies were still pretty little, so I wasn't doing like twice a day mil milking or anything like that. So I can just leave the baby on them. They're not gonna get mastitis, anything like that, and they don't have to be milked. So that has worked out really well for us in the past, and that's what we're planning on doing again. And then we have S'mores and her baby. We actually have the lady that takes our goats and they are bred there who is actually the original owner of s'mores i asked her if she would be willing to take a couple of extra goats because she already has she's helped us out with various things over the years and she's always offering what i need so much i love you so much baby thank you she's helped us out in the past and she's always offering like if we're in a pinch or anything like that and we need to have the goats come out she's more than willing to help and she has like 40 some goats for so for her to take another goat that doesn't even need to be milked daily and throw them in with the herd is like really no big deal because she's already taking care of the rest of the goats so we're gonna pay her to do that in the past we have paid someone to we've done two different things we paid someone to come stay at our house and take care of our animals and we've also had someone just come like after work and come take care of them obviously that was when we weren't milking or things like that so it didn't have to be multiple times a day and we didn't have bottle babies at the time so you do kind of have to plan seasonally i feel like around some of these things but especially i would say finding community is like one of the biggest things to help you out because if you can find someone who is single ideally or young like a young like an older high school student or young college student that works out really well if they would be willing to come out and do that people are always willing to make extra money so that's something to think about you do have to like budget a little bit more for your vacation to have your animals taken care of but i feel like that kind of goes with the territory a little bit um and so those are really good options or the other option that is really awesome is if you have any homesteading friends or friends that are interested in homesteading that you can swap services so if you have other friends at homestead you can just let them know hey when you go on vacation i'm more than willing to come take care of your animals and just swap so you're not even paying each other and they can take home like if they're milking they can take home the milk if they're collecting eggs they can take home the eggs etc or also if you have friends that are wanting to get into homesteading i feel like that's a really good option as well because then they can experience all of that so you can say hey you would get the farm goods eggs milk produce in the garden whatever it might be for that season if you could come out and just you know feed and water our animals take care of them you know once a day those are a few options as far as the animals that need a little bit more care day to day and checking in on chickens are a little bit easier so i'm going to take you into the chicken coop and show you what we're doing as far as that goes Can we get away from that? Pause on the chickens. I will show you the chickens and explain that situation in just a second, but s'mores needed to be milked, so I'm doing that first. Um, but let's talk about the garden next. So we have a lot of baby seedlings right now. The plan is we're gonna get all of them, for the most part, the majority of them planted out into the garden before we leave on vacation, which is the time I would be planting them out anyway. So it's not really going ahead of schedule or anything, it's just right on time. I may still have a few like solo cups left that will still be growing of things that I started later for succession planning, um, but I will just put those out in a spot that they can be watered along with the garden. That will be the plan for that. But with everything being planted out in the garden, the plan is we ordered, um, a timer and a sprinkler set up so that the garden can be watered automatically at whatever time we set it to so we're getting that set up over the weekend in the next few days and testing that out to make sure that everything's working well but we're going to set up a couple of sprinklers so that hopefully all of the beds should be covered pretty well obviously it may rain or whatever too we're only going to be gone a week so it's not like a terribly long amount of time but obviously we want to make sure everything's watered and it will be like only a couple weeks of being planted by the time we leave 
and so we want to make sure that it's getting a lot of water and all of that so i will put the solo cups out in a spot that the sprinklers can also reach them they may get knocked over by the wind and stuff but that's kind of the best that we can do so we're doing that for the garden so that everything will be well maintained and all of that and obviously you could have someone come out to your house too and i feel like that would probably be the easiest solution is just to hire someone to come out and take care of all of this for you. However, with like bottle babies and just all the different moving pieces we had, it was gonna be quite a bit of work. And since we had a few different options that we could automate some things here to take the workload off and then like the goats take them out places to be watched and just pay someone, it just seemed to kind of work out a little bit better for us to do the work ahead of time to set up these systems because we can still use those down the line too so that we can just leave and leave the animals here. And then we also have a neighbor friend that we're really close with that can, okay, really, you're eating my hair. <laughs> that can keep an eye on everything and make sure that everything is good and like working well if we need to text him or whatever. He's always more than happy to help us with that stuff. So that's what we're doing for the garden. And then now I will take you over to the chickens as soon as I finish milking and show you what we're gonna be doing there. Hey, 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 stop eating my hair. Stop, 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 no. Juniper. Hey! Baby goats love eating hair. If you didn't know, literally all of the baby goats we've had have done this. So if you have long hair, beware that your um, hair may be nibbled on. You haven't noticed in vlogs yet that my summer shoe of choice is these like you know plastic Birkenstock dupes or whatever from Target but I almost always have socks with them because I wear socks with like my house shoes inside and then these are specific for outside because we all have outside shoes that stay in the garage and then we wear those in the backyard so that we're not tracking stuff in anyways so I just slip them on with my socks and I just you know I never thought that I would be living this life looking so stylish but uh, here we are so don't judge me too much. We are heading in to come over to the chicken coop. We've got hay everywhere. We cleaned out half of it and then I still have to finish the other half. Syrup, to give you an update, is actually going to her new home this weekend. So you guys will not be seeing her anymore, sadly. We're sad about it, but also it's a really, really good home and a really sweet family that is getting into homesteading. So we're very, very excited for her to have like just a wonderful home. So this is the chicken coop that Matt made. I think you guys have seen it on other vlogs. It's got sunflower seeds all over the top of it right now that Matt threw over here for the chickens. But, And then Matt's uncle actually ordered this and sent this to us, so we have this sign on it. Anyway, so we have nesting boxes in there. Um, and then the top opens up. They can get in through this door. So what we're changing here is we're gonna be adding an electric door. We're gonna be working on that tonight and tomorrow. And the goats can stick their heads in, so it took some finagling, but they cannot reach the food. So we had to test that. Anyway, so we will be adding an electric door for the chickens and it will be on a timer that we can set. So we can have it open at a certain time in the morning, close at night. We haven't done that up until now, but we are gonna be doing that with us being gone so that they can be in here and be protected and not have any issues as far as that goes. And then obviously we don't have to open the door manually or anything. So we will be installing that and then as far as the food situation let me turn you around and show you that okay so this top part you can unhook and open up and let me get in here and show you so Matt built this new feeder and I don't have hands to point to anything right now but he got a five gallon bucket and then added I don't even know what these are called these little pipe things on the edge we have several of them all around so that the chickens can stick their heads in and get the food but the goats can't get to it if they were somehow able to get in here they cannot stick their head in there um however they can't get in now because we fixed that issue so we can fill this whole five gallon bucket up and so so far we've seen that the food can last six to seven days and that was with it filled not even all the way to the top of the five gallon bucket so we will be loading it up fully so that they will have food and then we will have a water inside of here as well so that they can have water at night but then we have we have um, a really big water out here for the chickens and the goats together and so they'll have access to this this lasts quite a, it's lasts several days if not longer than that um however we will be having our neighbor come over and check and just make sure they're getting clean water and all that and then he'll be gathering eggs for us too since otherwise they would get broken so that's kind of the system that we're doing as far as the chickens come here nexi come here hey daddy hey say hi 
Hi. Oh, you're playing with the water? Uh-huh. Hi. Oh, you showing them your tooth? What happened, Noxie? Ah. Uh, what happened? Where's your tooth? My next be dummy. No tooth? tooth? Where'd it mm -hmm. go? Ah. Uh, Is it all gone? Uh-huh. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> Okay, you can go play. So we had a little accident yesterday. I figured I'd update you real quick and Knox lost his front tooth completely. We went to the park and we were having a play date with some friends and he fell and he was bleeding a lot in his mouth so we were trying to see what was going on and he had a cut on his lip but his tooth was still there. And I, one of my friends that was there is a dental hygienist and so she was like walking me through the steps. We thought it was really swollen around his gum where his tooth was, one of the front teeth. And so we thought maybe it had gotten pushed in and so she was telling me what to do with that and he would not let me put him down. He's a pretty clingy like mama's boy anyways but when he usually gets up and brushes it off really quickly and he was not he was just really sad wanted to sit with me wouldn't let me set him down he wouldn't let me set him down and about 20 minutes later he got up and went to get a drink so i thought he was feeling better and he just starts screaming like he was in so much pain and his whole tooth fell out on the grass and so my friend was there she walked me through and you're supposed to put in milk all of this stuff and we had an emergency appointment with the dentist well one of my good friends is also a dental hygienist so we, we go to that dentist and so she got us in and she walked us through everything she was amazing and she was so good with him he was so brave and so tough but they could not put it back in sadly so he will just be our toothless little toddler for the next like four to five years which is honestly really sad he looks really cute with it but that's a long time every picture we have for like five years is going to be him not having his front tooth obviously in the scheme of things we are very very grateful that you know it was quick and easy. He didn't have to go through a lot more pain or anything at the dentist. Yeah. It all came out in one piece, which we were yeah. so grateful for. And so far there haven't been any other complications, but my mama heart is just a little sad about it, I'll be honest. So I figured I would show you guys that because you guys follow along with our family and all those things. This is kind of our first big like injury um, that has happened like that. So it wasn't the most fun day that we've had, but he's in good spirits. We took him out for some ice cream yesterday afterwards for being so brave and tough through all the stuff with the dentist and everything. And he's doing great. So it doesn't bother him at all. It's just, you know, thinking about him not having a tooth forever, but thankfully he's still adorable. I will say this is my favorite time of night when it just gets calm it's really quiet outside you just hear the wind and the birds we still have some cleaning up to do but all the animals are just hanging out and happy we've got chickens over there all clustered by the gate and then s'mores is up here and syrup is on the floor then we got the baby goats just running around and i just love watching them it's so peaceful back here I love watching my kids run around and just getting to see the animals like just live their best life you know just watching them be animals and get to run around and do all the things that they do i don't know it's just really fun and peaceful to me we are very excited to go on this vacation and get to go to the beach camden has seen the ocean before but it's been a few years and knox and payson have not at all so we're very excited for that and to get to spend time with my family my youngest sister actually graduates high school this weekend and so all of the homestead things and getting ready to leave for vacation and then she's graduating so we have her party and all the preparations for that and then mother's day as well and payson is getting dedicated at our church that same day <laughs> so it's going to be a full weekend for sure but we can't wait to go and spend time my sister is also going away for the summer um before she goes away to college she's moving away for college the first one of us to do that and she's also going to be gone the whole summer so we're excited to get to spend some time as a family with all of us and then my niece this will be the first trip that my niece gets to go on and it will just be so sweet to get to have that time together so we're very very excited to get away and just trying to get everything like plugged away crossed off the list so that we're ready to go and have a great trip the garden is behind me but obviously like i said it does not have anything planted out in it yet although it will very soon and i'm excited for that i can't wait to start harvesting from that no camden don't let syrup out right now please thank you um so anyways, yeah, that's a lot of different moving pieces there. Here, let me set you down and I'll finish talking to you. Okay, so that is a lot of different moving pieces. I know it sounds probably a little chaotic because this trip we do have just a lot of separate things for the animals. However, in the past we've just had someone either stay here or come out once a day and take care of everything all at once. It just kind of happened that this time we needed to have two of our goats bred during that time anyways. And we also had bottle babies. So the bottle babies have to eat, you know, every four hours. So that was kind of like a lot to have someone come handle bottle babies and goats and chickens and the garden and just all of that. And our friend that we've used in the past has also since moved away. So 
and all my family's going with us. So a lot of the options that we had as far as like single friends or young friends that would want to do something like house sitting just kind of didn't work out. So we thought of all of this and we're kind of coordinating it all together to make it happen. And we also have some homesteading friends that we totally could have asked, but all of this ended up working out. So that's the plan. That's how we're gonna go on vacation. And like I said, it does require more prep work and I'm not gonna lie about that. It is a little bit more stress, like just organizing everything and getting it all set up. However, it is still totally possible to get, you know, to get out and do that. I would say planning your vacation is key to plan it to not be during like the height of everything like if I we were go, we're going with my family so we just kind of had to go with the dates they said if we plan our own vacation we would likely plan it for like early fall um, just because we wouldn't have to deal with as much of being in the height of garden season having baby goats like all of those things so if you can plan around that that makes it a lot easier so that's one of the tips that I would say as well but yes you can totally still travel and go do things all of that sometimes we will have trips that come up where Matt will stay home and he can handle all of the chores if I just go for like a day or two um, but we do try to go on at least one big family trip like as a whole family too and get away because it's good to reset and just get away from you know everything that everyday life holds just kind of reset as a family and make new memories and travel and all of those things so those are our tips. I hope that was somewhat helpful to just see how someone else does it and see the options that are available for you. Like I've said a couple times, I think community is like the biggest thing. Finding other homestead friends, finding neighbors. If you live in the country, you may be able to just swap things like this with your next door neighbor that lives, you know, down the road from you or whatever. We live in a city, so our neighbors don't live this kind of life, so it would be kind of a lot to, like there would be nothing to swap because you know they don't live this kind of lifestyle or things like that so that makes it a little bit more difficult but if you live in the country that's totally an option finding your neighbors finding just other local homesteading friends that you could swap with um, and just finding connections with other people that are in and just finding connections with other people that are in maybe a different season of life than you and can come house sit or come by once a day after work things like that and take care of the animals for you sorry if you hear me sniffling my allergies are like ridiculous right now apparently where we live is literally the number one city in the entire nation for allergies, we found out recently, which is really not ideal because Matt has horrible allergies and now I'm getting them worse the past few years too and our kids have them. Anyways, random ta tangent. But anyways, yes, you can travel with a homestead. I hope some of this was helpful or just, I don't know, just insightful to see how other people do it. I think it's just a conversation to have because I don't think having animals in a homestead means that you can't travel. I think it just takes a little bit more creativity and this is how we've made it work for us. So. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you do have a homestead, if you also travel, and what your number one tip is for doing that, you know, with a minimum stress and all of that as possible. I would love to hear. And thank you so much for watching this video. I loved spending this evening, afternoon, whatever, with you guys. If you are new around here, we would love if you would follow along and see our journey. And if you're not new around here, thank you for watching another video. We will be sharing probably a little bit of our beach trip. We'll see how much we vlog of it. We might try and do that. Um, but we will be sharing lots of things in the coming months, lots of homestead things, garden updates, garden tours, all of that stuff, and I can't wait. So we will talk to you soon. Bye, friends. Did you see him cuddling together? That's just the cutest. Baby goats, man. They're pretty dang cute. We gotta go inside. <laughs>